For most, the steam engine is the symbol of the industrial revolution. It was the breakthrough needed to allow a multitude of machinery to be powered. And in this video, we'll be exploring the role that this strange mechanism had in it. Just before we get started, I would like to say that this video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, and you can go to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash makersmuse to sign up for a free trial today. So while steam power did exist for quite some time beforehand, it was the innovation to convert reciprocating motion, that is forward and back, into rotary motion that really established steam engines as the backbone of the Industrial Revolution. So how would you do that? Well, the most obvious way to any engineer would be to utilize a crank such as this one. James Watt saw an opportunity and set out to improve the Newcomen atmospheric engine by converting its movements into rotary motion. But there was one major issue. The crank was patented. Yep. There was another James Picard who had managed to secure a patent for the use of a crank in converting the engine's reciprocating motion into rotary motion. Instead of licensing, which he flat out refused to consider, Watt was forced to engineer an alternate method to circumvent the existing patent. And this was the result, the sun and planet gear. Side note, it's apparently still in debate whether James or an employee, Willem Murdoch, came up with the idea first, but regardless, the mechanism was suitably different to avoid infringing on the patented crank. It's also worth noting that this was only one of several alternate methods devised and then patented by Watt. He was a massive fan of using the patent system to stifle competition. Anyway, moving on, how does it work? To try and better understand the sun and planet gear linkage, I created this model in Fusion 360. I'll be honest, it took me quite a few shots to get right, so much respect to those guys back then. With all the parts printed out and assembled, let's have a look at how it functions. In the actual steam engine, there would be a piston over on this side with a linkage connecting to it. On each stroke, the planet gear, which is fixed to the arm, orbits around the sun gear and its teeth engage, forcing the sun gear to turn, creating rotary motion. I should mention that without a flywheel to maintain momentum, the sun gear is difficult to drive as it was originally intended on this model, but we can also turn it backwards by rotating the sun gear and then we get reciprocating motion by forcing the arm up and down. Keeping the gears engaged is a little bit tricky requiring this plate here. This little plate confused me hugely initially, I'll be honest, but it has no play in the force transfer at all. It simply is there to keep the two gears meshed together, prevents them from falling away from each other during the motion. So what advantages does this mechanism have over a regular old crank? Well, not a huge amount for the purpose of a steam engine, let's be honest. It's less efficient and far more costly to manufacture, and James Watt did explore many other alternatives as mentioned, but he settled on the sun and planet gear for his steam engines, as that was the best option available to him at the time. One thing I did notice when playing with a 3D printed model, however, is one of gearing. On a crank, a single full rotation will result in the linkage moving one full stroke forward and back. But with the sun and planet gears, they're slightly different. Here you can see with a one-to-one -one gear size ratio that one full rotation of the sun gear actually only results in half a stroke, requiring two full rotations for a full stroke forward and back giving us an effective two to one gear ratio if driven from the sun gear, or a one to two gear ratio if driven from the piston, like so, as it would have been originally in the original steam engine. However, I'm not sure how this would have affected the performance of the steam engine, but this kind of behavior makes this kind of gearing, known as epicyclic gearing, so powerful and still widely used today, albeit in a slightly different form. This is my run of the mill cheap cordless drill. This drill actually contains what's known as a planetary reduction gearbox. Instead of having one planet, it has several, three or more per reduction stage, rotating around a sun gear. And instead of a linkage to create reciprocating motion, there's what's known as a carrier plate, which holds those planet gears in place, and a stationary ring gear to mesh with those planet gears, which are now free to rotate and pass their reduction forwards to the next stage through the carrier. Planetary gear trains are durable, as there's many teeth in contact at any one time, it's unlikely to shear them under heavy load, and they're capable of very high reductions in a compact form factor. 
This is one of my favorite 3D printed examples of a planetary gearbox downloaded from Thingiverse, link in the video description. It has a gear reduction of four to one per stage. And you can have as many stages as you like daisy chained together to get your desired speed decrease and torque increase. Pretty neat, huh? In the end, the patent for the more efficient and cost-effective crank did expire and James Watt adopted it into his steam engines instead of the less efficient sun and planet gear. But personally, I find this to be quite a beautiful mechanism regardless. And if you ever get a chance to see a working Watt steam engine of the era, you'll see what I mean. A big thanks to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this episode on Maker's Muse. If you enjoy learning new things in incredible detail, which you probably do if you follow this channel, then you'll love the content on The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription on-demand video learning service, which gives you unlimited access to over 7,000 top-notch lectures and courses from top professors from the Ivy League and other great universities globally, as well as experts from places such as National Geographic and the Smithsonian. As part of my research for this episode, I've been thoroughly enjoying the 36 part lecture series on the Industrial Revolution taught by Professor Patrick Allard. The level of detail in each 30 minute lecture is insane and it's hugely interesting. Like, did you know the origin of the term broadcasting comes from farmers literally just chucking handfuls of seeds across their soil? Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. And it's all in video format, which is how I like to learn. So head over to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash makersmuse or follow the link in the video description to start your free trial today. And it also helps the channel out so I can continue to bring you content like this in future. If you want to see future 3D printing projects, tutorials, and more mechanisms from the industrial revolution, be sure to subscribe to Makers Muse. My name is Angus and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing. Bye. He has placed satellites into orbit. Orbit. He has actually...